Oh my god, it is late in the game, but I am getting back with you like I said I would. This is Mr. Benja with the 8-Bit Cubist, and um, let me tell you, uh, I recorded some of these podcasts, and um, I didn't get back to them as fast as I would have wanted to. Getting the whole process in order with everything else that has been going on has been a little bit of a struggle for me, but I'm here for you. So I'm going to go ahead and try to bang these out as fast as possible with quality um, production, I guess. And we'll see what happens as we go forward. Anyway, get at me on, sign, on on social media. Let me know what you think. This one that I'm recording is with Raphael Phillips, longtime friend of mine, 3D sculptor, great, very creative guy. We get into some heavy topics about uh, just creation in general and the artist path. Um, there's a good little bit in there about art and production and how those two get separated. And... Um, I think it's just a good listen for anybody in general who's trying to create something. So let me know what you think, and see you around. Hey, hey. Hey, my man, what's going on? Not much, man. How you doing? I am doing good, man. I'm doing good. So I am just now setting up here, and um, I'm, ha- I'm feeling good, man. I am, I am actually feeling good just going in the flow of things, and... I'm feeling really good about that. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. How have you been? Uh, not bad. Uh, just, just busy. Very busy. Busier than I want to be during a pandemic. But, you know, it's, uh, it helps take your mind off things. So uh, what's been, uh, I mean, did you expect to be busy? Were you trying to be? Uh, how did that happen? Uh, no, I happen to be doing digital artwork. And that's the only thing that can continue in production. So, yeah. Mm-mm. You know, I was, um, I don't know if you've checked out the podcast or not. Um, I, I've kept it kind of quiet, but I don't know if you've checked it out or not. Have you? Uh, no. Okay. So I started the podcast and the whole thing about it was I wanted to have it start up. And when it started up, I wanted to get into a certain rhythm and then at some point when I had 6, 7, 10, 15 or whatever episodes, then I would really start pushing it out to people. Okay. And, you know, uh, I did that because the problem of saying, hey, everybody, I'm doing something. Then they go check out your page and you've only got two two episodes and one of them is a 30 second introduction. Yeah, yeah. You know, you so. The archive. Yeah. So um, but before we get down, can you can you hear me? OK. Yeah. OK. Um, you're almost okay. Just a little louder would be good. How is this? Is that better? That is better. Okay. Cool. Yeah, man. Um, I had Marcellus on here before. Uh, I just happened to, I just happened to catch him at a moment and he just uh, wanted to talk some noise. So he was Mm -hmm. one of my first actual podcast guests. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and you know, let me know what you think of what, what's going on here. So I've got this thing called the ADD experience. Um, I wanted to separate that out from the 8-Bit Cubist podcast because I think that in my head has its own vibe and its own thing. You know, as you can tell from the art and everything as well. So I wanted to separate that. And when I when I decided to make that decision, it actually made me realize that, oh, shit, all this other stuff I was talking about has a ton of content that I've kind of been holding back on. So, yeah, um, ADD, Art Development Design Experience. Um, and that's ad experience if you're reading it. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah, I mean, you know, people like you, um, myself, we have a lot of this experience going around, and um, it never gets put out there. And when I say experience, I don't just mean we know how to do shit. We have, mm-hmm. we have perspectives because of what we've run into. We've, you know, we have these angles. So, yeah, that's kind of the vibe of the podcast, and um, you are my first um, guest here for, um, I don't even want to call you a guest, uh, you're, you're the first person on here for um, for this Benjacon thing that's happening. Okay. So, I just want to let you, that's the stage that's set right now. You don't see, right? You don't see it, but there's Eddie actually falling from my ceiling right now, so, oh. yeah. First <laughs> guest, Yeah, exactly. Um. And you know what's interesting, though, about the live thing is 
it just forces you to act and to put stuff out there right away. You know, there's, I've had like a lot of false starts with trying to do stuff. And I noticed one time I turned on Instagram live and it was just like, yo dude, it's like that. Uh, it's like you're on stage improv. You got to do something. Huh. And like you see people like logging in and commenting? Uh, sometimes. And you know, sometimes it's just, um, good enough to have you know, a couple eyes pop on and like, um, like the first time I did this, uh, Alicia jumped on. Oh, wow. Okay. Just out of, randomly. She was like, yeah, I was on and I saw you and I clicked to see what was happening. And she said, hey, how's it going? And left some comments and then went about her business. It, nice. it was very natural, free flowing. And um, it, it's actually pretty amazing. Um, even if no one's watching, just the fact that the little thing on the top says live, it like keeps you on your toes. I mean, it, but it's still like you can still access it, access it on Facebook after it's gone live, correct? Yes. Um, okay. So that was one of the reasons I, I chose uh, Facebook, at least for my end of it. You know, uh, I can go live. People can jump on, make comments. Uh, Facebook makes it easy to record, and uh, you know, it just has some simple tools that I, I I enjoyed. I actually did try to go the the full on, you know, hey, let me get my streaming OBS set up, let me get my um, podcast mic, let me do all this X, Y, and Z. And that very quickly introduced a lot of friction, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it was just like my laptop has a different setup from my computer, which has a different setup from my iPad. And, you know, trying to organize all this, I'm like, well, my desk. My desktop is the best one to record, but it's not in the right place. Then I have to change the lighting, and I'm by a window, so now I need to buy blackout curtains. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to have to... It just became a thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, watching watching what's going on in social media right now, I was just like, um, faster, quicker, is better. So, yeah. um, and with this iPad, it doesn't, you know, it... it uh, it tells that I, I'm not on like a full connection, so it doesn't do the full video record, like a not high, defi- not high, high, high definition or anything. But that's fine. It just kicks out a simple video, and then uh, yeah, I can pull the audio from it later. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it works out pretty good. Um, and yeah, they're they're all on YouTube, so. Um, okay. Yeah, you can... I mean, that's the only place I'd be able to check it out because uh, I don't have Facebook. So. Which is what I was going to lead to. What happened, man? People were looking for you. Uh, basically, Mark Zuckerberg is a terrible human being. And, I mean, I know he owns Instagram, but uh, Instagram is uh, it's more impactful to my visual art. But, you know, uh, Facebook is just, it's, uh, it, it's a terrible place. And it's run and owned by a terrible person. And that specifically, <laughs> like, I, I think it was uh, around, I think it was terrible for a long time. Like, I, I remember the, the social media movie came out, and everybody was like, oh, that's such an unfair depiction of it. Uh, my girlfriend and I watched it again, like, say, two weeks ago. Okay. No, it, it's about right. It, it, they nailed it. And uh, it's just like, there's something about when the George Floyd protests were happening and Trump was like, oh, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, and how that's, like, actually a phrase, which I think it's from some racist sheriff in, uh, I think it was Miami. And, I mean, this is known. And in a board meeting, basically, Zuckerberg was like, oh, no, that's, uh, he, he basically tried to deny that. Hmm. In the face of just, like, a giant... A civil rights uprising. Yeah. Just for money. You and know, it's just like, that's, and it's um, like, for me, that was the, that was the, that was the line. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. You're a piece of shit. I don't need this. And actually, you know, now that like, my parents have gotten on to this, and like, people of that, that age, whatever it used to be is gone. Hmm. So, and he's trying to like, sue the, uh, to uh, Hawaii to be able to buy a piece of their land. You said Hawaii? It, it, yeah. Yeah, okay, I heard it, about he's, that. It's, it, it's, he's fucking trash. But he's trash. 
truly trash. Yeah, so I've run into jokers like this from Silicon Valley. Um, mm-hmm. It's a very uh, it's a very matter of fact kind of left wing programmer, um, and I definitely mean programmer. Usually in the case, yeah. you know, left wing programmer type of mindset, and I don't know where it comes from, but it pops up quite a bit where. They can be as left wing as they want, or as yeah. liberal, progressive, and I really don't like to get into those labels because people start getting confused yeah. on what's happening. But yeah. if you were to classify it, that's what it would be. Um, but basically, they have this very matter of fact, you know. Well, computers aren't biased; they don't understand, you know, black and white. So blah blah blah, and yeah. then it's just such a, you know, you know, like that. It's that what they call that northern racism. Yes. You know, yes. where it's like, I don't, oh, I don't know what you're talking about because, you know, every bathroom is the same way. And it's like, look, man, um, <laughs> you know, there are going to be differences in bathrooms, you know, however you want to try to cut it, you know. Yeah. And there are going to be differences in a lot of different areas of science. And I think that's fine. You know, I, I, as we've gone over, a lot of people may not know of our discussion. So I got to remember to stop and rephrase some things, but I celebrate differences. I'm like, yeah, you do things your way. You're from, you're from, uh, you know, Maryland, uh, you know, about stuff in places that I don't, um, you know, I've, I was raised in Florida. So there's a lot of crazy shit there that I had to shake off, you know? Um, uh-huh. Thank goodness. yeah. Hey man. <laughs> uh, but it, it's like it's just really um it's just really kind of dumb how i think social media has been um has kind of played out in a lot in, in facebook is one of the terrible places man uh i do yeah. not you know i i don't deny that um that it's just got a lot of problems so yeah. but so i i totally get it and now, now you said not just because of uh, Zuckerberg, but I want to make sure I get the other side of it was just also the people on Facebook. Yeah, you know, I, I came to this conclusion that I tweeted something, I think, maybe a week or two ago. Okay. Saying, like, I remember when the internet used to be fun. And hmm. I really thought about what changed. And obviously, there, there, it's a multi pronged. Uh, question. It was a multi-pronged answer. But I... Did you just say make the internet fun again? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, basically. (laughs) Make it fun again. But in order to make it fun again, I think... I remember when my mom didn't understand it. Yeah. And that's when it was fun. (laughs) Yeah. And then, or at least she understood certain aspects of it, like email and like... You know, but she didn't chew it on Facebook. And then, you know, if you want to start getting the, the psychology of my mother, who's basically like, you know, Uncle Ruckus as a woman, um, it's just like you start seeing her pop up on Facebook and then, like, they, you know, spouting all of this, like, conservative nonsense. And I mean conservative in the, in the, in the way of, like, 2020. Okay. Not when it was just like, you know, oh, we're going to be fiscally conservative, small government. It's the other conservative nonsense. Sure. And I'm like, why am I seeing your shit here? That you shouldn't be here. And it's the same thing with Twitter. It's just like, I remember when this place used to just be reckless and wild, and it was about the jokes and memes. I get the jokes off, and just like, that was it. Twitter, and Twitter. now I'm like, yeah. It's like, it's politics and just everybody being like angry. Twitter. But if you look at, you can you can link that to age. You can link that to the, who are the people that are like, obviously if you're paying attention right now, there's a lot to be angry about. Mm-hmm. But you can still get these jokes off. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's always room. Like, yeah. The ship will be burning, and I'll be cracking the joke. You know, like, you have to. It keeps you sane. But, yeah. like, it, that is now gone. And it just was reminding me of Facebook. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's people who, you know, were not necessarily grew up with the internet, yeah. who are now 
participating and ruining it. And you could also tie that with like, oh, now there's this vested money interest in it. Like it's just it's all like there's too many people in there now. That's a, that's a big that's a, that's a big key. And this is where you know I start to uh, take the design of it into play. It's like you know to me it's when you design a system, people are going to use it in ways that match with the design, right? So yeah. when you have um. If you don't, uh, do you know who Alex Wolf is? Her name sounds familiar. Please. Okay, I'll uh, I'll we'll link up on uh, Instagram and um, I'll show you, I'll share some of that later. But she had a good couple of discussions about how the the new social how a lot of technology hasn't been designed for people. It's been designed um, more or less to use people. You know what I mean? Not for people's use, but for people yeah. to use it, yeah. if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the same thing happened with Twitter like a while back. And when I say a while, I mean a couple of years back, they really started looking at, well, hey, Instagram is far outpacing us. Snapchat's far outpacing us. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in terms of money and clout, what are we doing mm-hmm. wrong? So they brought a bunch of uh, people in to really work out the next phase of Twitter. And then that's when it started going a little away from uh, the fun aspect you were talking about. Like, um, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen those promoted links now. Uh, you're just scrolling through and all of a sudden it's like a yeah. tabloid almost ad. And there are a lot of those. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, actually, I actually clicked on a couple of them. So, you know, I can't talk. But um, there's that. The The trending topics are are all clickbait now. You know, it's, yes. my God, I log on and it's like, you know, and this is the people too, you know, feeding into it. Um, yeah. But the system, the way it's designed works out to where, oh, you like canceling people? You know, well, we're going to keep, you know, boosting these, uh, who, who was it today? Today it was like a uh, Chris somebody is over party. I forgot who it was. Um, oh yeah, those, those freaking bot tweets. Yeah, or like if it's not a bot, it's something, it's something wild. No, th- this guy is over party, or um, yeah. this thing is trending. But it's so all of it seems very, very tabloid, which is yes, un- yes. to me. It's like I laugh at it, and I think I've gotten to a, a space where I can deal with Twitter. But yeah. getting into those hashtags, I did that for like on a Saturday and a Sunday a couple weeks ago, and it just messed my weekend up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, and that's that's what's weird. It's like that's not what it used to be. You know what I mean? Like, I, it, it just now was it as progressive as it was? No. Was it more toxic? Yeah. But I just feel like it wasn't... Like, and I mean toxic as in, like, you know, just dudes being toxic about, like, some, you know, dude shit. <laughs> but, but it was, like, it, it just, for whatever reason, it feels more insidious now. Yeah. Than it did before. Because you could, like, dismiss some shit. Like, and I... I mean, I even tie this into video games. I feel like all around, like, between 2014 and 2017, like, you had the rise of Trump. You had parents really getting active on Facebook. And you had the video game community really start arguing this gamer game bullshit. Yep. Which is just, like, it's just like, you can't even enjoy video games anymore. Like, I was not particularly impressed by The Last of Us 1 in terms of gameplay alone. Like, I, in terms of story-driven narrative, the story, great. You know, and I, I did not finish, I got halfway through, so there is that. But the gameplay was so, like, for winning all these awards, I should not be able to see the room-by-room room clearing of zombies gameplay. Like, you're not innovating on gameplay. Right. You're innovating on story. So get the awards for that. You know, like, Game of the Year to me being actually innovative game play. Like, physically playing the game. Hmm, yeah. Like, not presentation. Like, 
make a separate category. Anyway, so now I was just like, oh, whatever, Last of Us. So now I'm like, I feel like I want to go buy Last of Us 2 just because all these fucking trolls are like, oh, there's this girl, Abby, who's jacked. And that's not how females look. And if you look at the, first of all, if you look at the guy's name and shit, I'm just like, yeah, you can't, you don't even have a say. That, dude, yeah. that, that's that's one easy thing that I've started doing, um, is just like looking at who made the post. Yeah, you know, man. look at look at the look at the ABI, man, and then you just like, nah, that ain't it. I forgot who I forgot who I forgot who said it. Uh, one celebrity, he was like, oh, I don't respond to the uh, the blank faces, you know, and I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. But when someone just said, or on Twitter, you know, I don't respond to eggs. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, hey, man, if somebody can't take the time to, and they just jumped on to give me some noise, and, you know. Yeah. And he said that, like, raised his happiness meter, like, you know, 50% or something. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, it's like, it's just so weird because it's like, growing up, like, whatever character design we got, we were happy with it. It didn't matter. We were able to approach each game with, like, you know, this new sense of wonder. Granted, that could be because the graphics weren't super great and you have to use more of your imagination. Like, but it's just, it's just, I feel like all this, this dumb shit is tied together. Parents on Facebook and Twitter, money on, like, Facebook and Twitter, video game nerds being the fucking worst, and the country being ran by a reality TV car. Like, it's all the same shit. It's, same. it's a lot of heavy shit that's rolling together into this massive avalanche that's rolling down a hill. Yes. You know? Um, yeah, and it's like one of those Bugs Bunny kind of avalanches with the big ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Big ass, yeah. Big ass Katamari ball coming down the hill. Yeah. So I, what I want to know is, um, and I'm going to jump back to uh, what you were doing, um, to this in a second, but you said during this pandemic, you, uh, there's a lot of work for you. And I've had some discussions about, about pandemic work, um, with some people Mm -hmm. and some people are just like shutting down. They're like, dude, I can't do anything. I can't blah, blah, blah. I can't make films anymore. And I'm like, you you can't, you can't make a film, dude, just get all your people together and, uh, you know, do, um, do a live reading of one of your scripts and it's like a podcast right there and yes, people are going to be extremely open to it and they're giving yes, me all, and they're giving me all this pushback right and i find out one of my friends is actually doing just that so i'm like pointing it to, i'm like pointing to him like um in fact he's going to be on he's going to be on um what's the date uh, thursday maybe yeah he'll be on thursday i think um but he was uh his name is david david warano and he's like, yeah, I got this whole production company thing going on, and we just started doing these table reads remotely. And nice. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, okay, so this is a way to actually make um, – you can advance in a bad situation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's not like the option is, you know, uh, go back to normal or just shut down and be sad. This, mm-hmm. You know – you start creating things and building something new and trying new avenues out, uh, things that people weren't, you know, that people weren't going to do before they're going to do now. Yes. Like, dude, I know people that had never ordered anything off of Amazon or really ordered anything online. They just didn't do it. Wait, 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 wait. Who has never, like, I'm not, you know, they who, but like, I, Somebody have, having never ordered something off of Amazon in 2020? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a larger phenomenon than you think. The uh, the amount of sales that uh, online was taking up is, gosh, at at best estimate, like a couple years ago I was looking at this, was only, not a couple, even a couple years ago, I mean like two. It was only, um, it wasn't hitting like 45%. If it, When it starts getting close to 50%, then people will freak the hell out. But most, okay. we're talking about during Christmas even, most sales would would happen um, 
offline. You know, it's just it's just a numbers wow. thing. Yeah. You know, like like me and you do this all the time. But if there's somebody in let's say uh um New York, mm-hmm. they walk down the street, um there's a Target right next to them. There's a, their little bodega. They can call whoever for food. Um, you know, there's just there's just places and people who don't find the need for one random stuff and two, you know, the need to get it from somebody like Amazon. Um, yeah. It's especially things like you know, um, clothes, furniture. Now, when you start getting into that stuff, um, you know, you definitely don't have people who have ordered, you know, pants online. Like, I just ordered some internet pants last year and was, I was so happy. Yeah. Oof, that, I mean, that, okay, that is next level. I have ordered pants once, and it's just, uh, it, it's so hard. It is so, <laughs> it is so hard. So, you know, uh, I had to actually order, um, like, I took one of my older pair of pants and, like, tried to find that exact model. And they were like, yeah. they don't make this anymore, you know, because they always change the models and the versions and the fits. That's like, always how it happens. No, 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 it's not the classic fit now. It's the retro fit now. Oh, it's not the yeah. retro it's, it's not the retro fit. It's the, uh, you know, Wrangler fit or whatever. I don't know. They just make up stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, uh, this looks kind of the same. It's got the little pleat right there on the side and... uh all right, whatever. Screw it. I'll order it. And when I, when they got to me, they were actually a different material than my previous pair. <laughs> but I was like, oh, this is actually slightly better. It was weird at first, you uh, know. Yeah. It's, it's like when the hundreds changed over from their heavier shirts to their kind of lighter ones. Um, Still, I miss the heavier shirts. Because... Yeah, that was a that was a thing that I think everybody kind of stopped that after American Apparel. Um, but yeah, the, but yeah, the online thing, man, everybody's, uh, there's so much more that people weren't comfortable doing Mm -hmm. case in point. I'm here speaking live online and I just wouldn't have done this before. Not that I, not that I was scared to, or didn't think it was beneficial. It just wasn't on my list of things to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense, man. Definitely makes sense. So yeah, uh, you know, I just want to, I, I just want to um, flow and, and create. And I was like, gosh, this this bad situation allows for a lot of good opportunity. And I used to hate when sales guys would say stuff like, you know, never waste an opportunity, never waste a. Um, how does it go? It's about wasting an opportunity. Um, never waste a good disaster or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it seems very cynical and uh, slimy in a lot of ways. But when you step back and you actually find people who are really good people who believe that, Mm -hmm. then you have to start to wonder, okay, what is it behind this sentiment? What is it behind this statement? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if you've ever had to move and you didn't want to, you might think to yourself, well, hey, now that I'm moving, I can get rid of all this X, Y, and Z that I don't need. Yeah. And suddenly there's good that comes out of it. Yeah. So, um, we know that you're doing work, but let me back up a, a quick second. Mm-hmm. What kind of, what do you call yourself now that you're not just a game artist? Uh, digital sculptor. Digital sculptor. Yeah. So, um, what does that mean to people? Uh, because Every, whether it be games, the effects, uh, costume design, um, or even statues, the medium, common uh, denominator for me is always the DZ brush. So, which means digital sculpting can apply to all four of those things. So, um, yeah, basically just means you're probably going to be sculpting a character or props. But mostly it means sculpting a character. And every game needs characters. I mean, again, I'm, I'm working on a statue. I'm, I'm finishing up a collectible right now. Uh, last week I was doing some of the effects work, and next week I'll be doing some game work, all utilizing the same program. 
So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. So, is is ZBrush the industry standard then? Yes. For well, I mean, you still have to have like you know your Maya's or you know if you're the random studio that still uses 3D, 3ds Max. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you still have to have the hub in which you need to pipe all these things in. But uh, yeah, no, it, it's it's more flexible. It's just straight up Maya. For costume design, I was just using. A, oh, I'm sorry, straight up ZBrush. Uh, for costume design, I was just using ZBrush and Photoshop and Keyshot, which is a rendering program. But it's just like it's it's pretty valuable at this point. Wait, ZBrush is pretty valuable, or Keyshot is pretty valuable? Uh, ZBrush, in terms of what you can use it for. Right. No. It, it's just the output is so much more than when I first got into the industry. So. Yeah, just and the cool thing is you're always sharpening these skills that can be utilized amongst several different things. Right. So yeah, just to kind of wrap that in bow, that's why I call it digital sculpting because it truly is just sculpting and it's the uh, digital and a lot. It's 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 something that can be used in more than one place in me. Like before, digital sculpting was just like, oh, here's the effects in games. So how did you decide on how did you decide on digital sculpting as opposed to the other disciplines? Which other disciplines? Uh, you know whether you're doing um, uh, how, you know environment design, um, concept art. Um. Oh, uh, gotcha. Um, well, I started doing characters uh, professionally, actually, at Rockstar Review, mm-hmm. and that was. The time first game, ZBrush was used, but not really. So there wasn't really a sculpting aspect, and you couldn't truly do it in Maya. But around that time, that's when ZBrush really started becoming a force, and you would start to see like better looking characters. You, know, you had your like Gears of War at that time, and you could only achieve those things through normal maps, which you could generate at that high res and ZBrush. So, um, it really separated a lot of great artists from not so great, or Hmm. artists that were willing to learn from those who weren't. Because now you had to learn this program, and what it required is to know how to sculpt, to know form, to know art. Like, my shit didn't really require you to know art. I mean, you did, but not, you could slide. But when you actually have to, like, oh, I have to sculpt this muscle, it kind of happens, like, that, that requires a lot of practice. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think because I still want to do characters, that it's just I, the decision was kind of made for me. So I, I, I like that vibe. Um, I don't think I've ever heard that angle from you before. And I totally respect it because when everybody's kind of doing something similar and... It, oh, this is for me at least. I'm not trying to put this on you. Um, mm-hmm. But when everybody's doing something similar and suddenly a technology or a new aspect of creation comes along that says, no, 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 this person is clearly on, I won't say a higher level, but on a different level than the rest of you. And only the smaller subset can do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know where that joy comes from, whether it's, uh, personally, I mean, whether it's, um, you know, pride or just the fact that I know something special and I'm, or pioneering, you know, I like, I like exploring. So, um, that's part of it for me. Um, you know, where I was, for example, um, I spent a lot of time in the past couple of years looking into, uh, sales, right. And once I started going down that route, I was looking around and seeing all these artists, who really didn't understand sales. And I'm like, oh, this is an interesting space that, that's overlapping like the sales people and the art people. Mm-hmm. Like, there are art people, I mean, yeah, there are art people who simply don't understand how things exist outside of their head or the final product. It, had, they have, yes. it has no bearing on the person that it's going to. Um. And then on the other end, you have these salespeople, and you're trying to tell them, like, hey, look, this uh, this logo is garbage. 
um, pay the guy, but don't use it. I'll make you another one. And they're like, no, no, I've already paid for it. I should use it. You're like, it's bad. It's not just, yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's, yeah. they're, they're salespeople. So they're like, they don't, they don't see what you're, you're getting at it. And they just get frustrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, it's like, a. It's an interesting um, space when you're when you're pushing that next level. So I, I totally uh, get what you're saying there. Now, with going into that, um, you know, sculpting and characters and all that, and that led you, um, that led you further down the tube with games. At what point did it start going from games to movies to whatever else? Uh, well, when I moved up to LA, that's where it started hitting movies. Um, to be honest, let's see, I moved up in 2010. I, I was okay. Like, I, I was an okay artist. And, uh, I, man, I, there are some opportunities that I turned down that just, uh, it still haunt me to this. Well, not haunt me, but it's just like, oh, I could have had the bag a long time ago, but whatever. Because I, it, it, you know, anyway. Like who? Like um, who? Like who? You care to name? Uh, so, yeah, no, I remember Riot was like, this is before they were arrived. Okay. They sent me an art chest and it was like, it was, the, the drawing was bad anime, man. Like, it was like some fucking garbage ass. Like, oh, wow. It, this had to be 2000. <laughs> well, 2011? Yeah. And it was just like, it looked like it was drawn by a high schooler, which, that would be good for high school, but like, it was just, and so I, I did the art chest, but I made the I made the character look better, and I made it more realistic, and I'm just like, so I turned that in, and which was like, that was arrogant of me, you know, looking back, it's like, if I wasn't interested, yeah. I should just not have wasted my time, you know what I mean, but I was like, no, your shit is garbage, I'm going to, I'm going to do this better, and uh, they actually messaged me back, they're like, this is really great, we love what you're doing, we love your work, can you just make it in our style? And I was just like, nah. Mm. And then Riot became Riot. All the people that were there got rich. And, uh, yeah. Oh, man, that's a... Uh, yeah, yeah. I... Wait a minute, you know, that mean, was... <laughs> so when, when, was this, when was this again? This is like... Maybe somewhere, because like maybe 2011 or 2012. You know, their office park was right next to Sony Santa Monica where I was. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah. And that, but now they've moved. Yeah. They moved, uh, it, it's like closer to South Hill. So, that's just kind of like right down the street from me. So, um, but yeah, man, like that shit, I think about that. Mm-hmm. There was like, I did, I did a test for Quanta Dream. Um, and it was just like, it turned out great, and I was just super late in, like, giving it to them because I was doing, like, the Lego Mega Man stuff. Right. And they didn't even respond. Like, I actually met the art director at GDC, and they were, like, really excited about me doing the test, and I, like, gave it to them a month later. I don't know. I, I've actually been thinking a lot about, like, I think I was actually kind of insane from 2007 to, like, maybe 2015. Uh, and, uh, I can neither confirm nor deny that statement. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I realize it just came from, like, trauma. Hmm. If you don't deal with your shit, and not even, and when I say your shit, I mean, like, everybody, because you're born to human beings, you are placed with a certain amount of shit. Now, in my case, it just so happened that my mother and father, I, they were slash are true narcissists. Okay. And there's a 20 year gap between my father and my mother. Individually and, or together? Or. Oh no, like to get like individually. Like my dad okay. was. God, he was. Were you seven? My mom was 27. Okay. So even like. You know, age is, it's whatever, but also when you look at the psychology of a 47-year-old man who's just like 
let me get with this 27 year old lady and have a child. Like, I, I wasn't even planned, but like, there is, there is some shit there. Hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's a lot of shit there on both sides. Okay. I, I, that phrase has so much weight now because of jackass in office. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, uh, on, like, you have the person, you have the lady who's looking to try to, you know, maybe fuck a father figure. Okay. I guess. And then you have the man who is only looking to fuck younger women because of his own relationship with women. That's probably not good because an older woman would call him on his bullshit. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, there's several, but like, so I realized only like, you know, like 2016 as my dad I started going to therapy, and I'm, I'm very open about this now, but it's just like, therapist was like, he set me free in so many ways. He's like, yeah, you were kind of emotionally abused by two people. And it's just like, I thought it was just me, because what I would always do is be like, oh, well, you know, I'm not starving. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm right, not, right. like, in war work. Like, you do the whole checklist of, like, well, I'm not doing this, so it's all good. But it's actually not. Right. And so it's just like, I started realizing, like, oh my God, like, raised by two narcissists who there's a relationship shit between them. One is really smart, but like, you know, Afrocentric in a weird way, like not even in like the Black Panther way, not in the, the good Afrocentric Afro way of like, you know, Black Power or whatever, but just uh-huh. like, oh, uh, a black person made this and a white person made this, so you automatically have to choose what the black person does, which I rejected as a kid. I'm like, I'm choosing what's good. Fuck all that noise. Right. And then, on the flip side, the other person is like, would soon become evangelical. Right. And, like, I mean, like, falling out in the middle of the floor, screeching in tongues, to the point where the pastor and his wife were like, what is this lady doing? Like, it was like, she broke the norm of the of the church. Like, speaking in tongues is normal in this church. But then you just get a little too crazy with it to where people are just like, hmm. Right, right. So it's just like, it just kind of caused me to, like, retreat inward. And then when I, like, actually started, like, growing, it was much later than you. Like, I was smart. I, I hung out around a bunch of, like, older people all the time. Like, I could maintain myself with older people. I didn't know how to, like, truly dialogue with people my own age. Okay. And then, like, what that meant. And so it's just like, yeah, trauma, that is not necessarily your fault. You have to, it, you don't deal with it. You kind of, it will deal with you at some point. So. Like, you can't run away from that shit. Right. Now, how long, um. How long were you uh, going through the therapy? Uh, I'd say about two or three years. Okay. So it's basically from the time that my dad got diagnosed with cancer. And it wasn't even because we were particularly close. It, it was because we weren't close. Right. That's just like, okay. It, the adversity that was between us was with the road game. And now that I don't have that adversity anymore... Or it's, it's, you know, the, the chapter on that is ending. Yeah. Even if you don't like a person, it's like the, the not liking of somebody is energy. Right. And, like, I don't think a lot of people truly realize that. It's just like, no, that is that is something. That is that is a type of energy that eats and fuels you. And when you that's mean, not gone. You mean, act, you mean like a just a, a harbored dislike that's sitting in you? Yeah, it, it's a point. It's it's a uh, it's a point in space. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If, if you're like floating in in you know, imagine you're floating in in zero gravity. You know, X, Y, and Z don't even matter. You don't even have a point. Right. And, and you that is an emotional hate or severe dislike. Is an emotional point in the negative space of emotion. 
and I mean negative space and like not in terms of like positive or negative, but just like right. you know, in the blank space of emotion. That is an anchor. And when that shit's not there anymore, you know, what do you do? You have to find that anchor within yourself. But uh, yeah, like that's that's why I started going, and uh, it was just more like having somebody. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Over. You said sure. you said that's why you started going. Um, was there a breaking point? Were you, or was it just rolled up, rolled up at over time? Like, you, were you just sitting at a restaurant one day and saying, you know, this delicious San Diego burrito is not comfort, <laughs> comforting me like it should. Let me go somewhere deeper. You know, I mean, how, how did that transition happen in your head? I was working a job, twenty sixteen, and there's guy that I became very good friends with because we were working on some uh, project for Apple and we had to like we were in this place what we called submarine and it was this like blank white building that was completely empty and it's just like it was downtown LA and uh, you're just in this stale office space and so like I mean you know when you start working on a game or something with anybody like it's very easy you get to know people very well, very quickly. It's like it's like being in the trenches. It's like being in war, almost. Because you're in war with, yeah. you know, the publisher or whoever else. So, uh, we, got, we, came, we became very close. And he's a little bit older than me, but he just seems very balanced. And he mentioned his therapist at one point in time. And I think I was going through, like, some breakup or something, and it just was taken really hard. And, like, he didn't even mention it in terms of, like, hey, you should see somebody. But it just came up in conversation. And um, I asked the information of that guy. And one day, I, I between the breakup and my dad dying, called him a therapist. And, like, he's just a cool dude. He was just uh, this older guy, probably, like, maybe 70 or 80. But it's just, like, he just seemed cool. Mm. And when you get, like verification that shit was actually crazy it makes you it's like because I thought my my childhood was crazy I just didn't pay it any attention you know I didn't give it any weight it's like ah that's probably just me whatever right and the guy was like no this is not normal mm. and it was just like such a weight off my back like oh okay got it yeah and it just makes you feel like you're actually not crazy Every motherfucker around you is crazy. But, like, and when you're sorting through... Like, I thought I never really dealt with those things up until, like, I'd say post-Rockstar. And if I'm giving you the super real and to everybody out on Facebook, it was basically, like, I fought so hard to get a job in, you know, video games or movies or whatever. Okay. Because my dad was like, art sucks and you'll never make a good living. And so that, that I remember that. College. And then when I got the job, and it was like the rock star that everybody's read about, which I've heard it changed. So, you know, if it is. But our era, or at least, I mean, let me see for me, my era was, uh, it was good, then it was very bad. And it was just like, what the fuck was all that fighting for? If it's the same, like, it's, I'm facing a different version of my dad in the form of, like, right. career. Like, what was the point of all of that? Mm -hmm. To just be faced with the same thing. And I think that actually made me crazy for a little bit. It was like I had no purpose. I just didn't give a shit. I mean, like, yeah, send me your art check. Fuck you, I'll send it back in a month. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. it, it's good, but, like, whatever. Oh man, I was, oh god, I just, I even, I was working with a Japanese developer. My communication was shit. They wanted me for like the whole project. They just gave me one character. You know what I mean? It was just like, yeah, I would have done the same. Because I was fucking crazy. Yeah. At least for that, you know, just for that point of time. I was, I was just lost. I was just like, there, nothing has any point anymore. Yeah. Because it's all the same shit. So, and then you realize, no, that's not true. But you have to go through some shit to realize that. So, uh, and you know what? Coming to that realization that you have to go through shit, um, I shouldn't say the realization, but the acceptance of 
the negative with the positive. The, um, the, uh, the experiences that you have, you know, they all kind of lend to your understanding of what's going on. Like, you'll look back in a couple years and say, oh, well, that wasn't that bad. I just had this perspective on it. Or, Mm -hmm. you know how that goes. Um, Yeah. So, no, I can definitely uh, appreciate that. And that's one thing that's been that's been my way of, uh, you know, kind kind of trying to go through whatever, you know, is, is happening is just looking at the negative experience, uh, pandemic, um, personal, uh, issues. The fact that the fact that multiple higher ups at, um, you know, at certain companies have told me that, Hey, we like what you're doing. Um, we like you as a person, but we're just going to put yeah. a stop to it. And yeah. that, for me, that was the biggest headache. Um, I'm not even going to call it a headache. That was the biggest, you know, just existential crisis. That they like me as a person and they like what I'm doing, yeah. but they're very clearly and plainly telling me they don't want it to happen. Now, may I ask you a question about that? Absolutely. And I'll, I'll preface this because I'll, I'll say uh, my girlfriend, she she had experience at an older job where it's similar to that. And she was doing, she was crushing the work. She was doing very well. Everybody loved what she was doing. But just for whatever reason, the higher-ups were just like, you know, something wasn't clicking. And I, I told her, I'm like, okay, so now we have to run down the checklist. It's not your work. It's not your, it's not your ethic. It's not how you're interacting with anybody. Which leaves, like, we went down the entire checklist. It's, it's one thing. And I was like, this is sexism. So I say, I ask you, do you think it's because it's who you were? A black man. Well, um... Regardless of how you get to the conclusion, it, and and this isn't me, so it took me years to really understand it, and I'm still coming to a place where I understand it. It's that I've gotten to, um, I've gotten to understand that people are far more interested in ego, identity, um, position, power, perception, etc. than I am. Yes. Far more. Like when people say I'm being weird, sometimes, a lot of times, that has to do with the fact that, you know, I may not care that I got a jacked up haircut. I'll just be like, well, yeah, I'll just get another haircut next week. And they're like, dude, you should be mad at the barber and this and that. I'm like, well, I'm just not going to him. I mean, that's, in the discussion, I'm not going to the barber. I'm not, I don't need to be mad at him. Yeah. I don't need to wear a hat. I don't need to walk around in shame. You know, it's all these little things that bothered people just didn't affect me in the same way. Yeah. Um, so, in, in fact, like you're talking about bad things happening, I would actually take a lot of that and um, say, you know what? This gives me an opportunity to try to cut my own hair. I would do something like that and have fun well, with it. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, I don't, I don't recommend it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. If you if you've ever seen uh, a part that's that's far too wide and at a bad angle, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know that, that's that's been me, and you know I laugh at it now. But yeah. so what's um? And I'm definitely going to answer your question about the the isms. Um, but when I've been um. When I've been put in these situations, what I personally run up against is, you know, someone, um, people are expecting the traditional response. They're expecting me to, um, you know, uh, cower in front of them, or they're expecting me to jump up and get mad, like, you know, hey, you old motherfucker. They expect me to, you know, break out of my I chill mode or whatever. And they think that because I don't, that I'm not um, 
logging all of all of uh, those feelings. Yes. Like, for example, there was one dude who used to come by my cubicle and say some nonsense, you know, and I would just kind of keep going about my business. Like, yeah, man, whatever. Uh, you go do your thing. And he got comfortable, and this is a bad strategy of war. I, I didn't realize this at the time. But, yeah. you know, there are certain um, little kindling fires that you need to put out immediately. Um, but with him, I was just like, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to I'm not gonna jump into anything with you. Mm-hmm. Now, I won't be... I won't be mean or malicious about it, but I'll go to war with jokers like right away, right off the bat. You know, if they, if something, if something, yeah, let them know. If something, something's really egregious, you got to flex on them. So in that situation, we were in a meeting, right? And I'm just sitting out taking notes. This guy goes into this blah, 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 and we're doing this and that and that, and we clearly won't be able to get this and this and that and that and da, da, da. So we're going to go. And I'm looking at like my notes and everything. And I'm like, Hey, wait a minute. Um, the part that I'm working on is going to address all this. It's going to be this and this. Like, no, 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 we're giving it to this other guy and blah, blah, blah. We don't think you're able to. And then it all jumped back at me. I was like, oh, all those little shots he were take, he was taking, he was kind of seeing if he could shift power or, you know, he could, like, muscle me out of my own position a little bit or give one of the newer guys something that was under my, my realm of um, control. And I had to go, I had to go in on this dude. And that was the one moment I was like, no, no, no. To rectify this, I have to go to war. I just have to start bombing on this dude. Yeah. And, you know, I hammered him out at the meeting and he was like, well, you know, we'll come back to this later. He thought it was over. Dude, I, 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 I didn't stop, man. I was like emailing, you know, facts and figures and, you know, uh, updates to the database and everything. It was just an everyday daily thing, you know, where I just kept on coming back at this guy because I realized, oh, my gosh, if he just if he was telling me that stuff, there's no telling what he was telling other people over email, what he was, you know, doing in um, in meetings. You know, so it was um, a really bad situation. And I think that's actually a lot of what led to me leaving one of my jobs, you know, where. Where you, where I got to that point where it was like, you know what, we like you, we like what you're doing, but you you can't exist in this capacity. Yeah. Um. So that said, isms definitely exist. Uh, I got a ton of uh lowered expectations um for being you know a black guy. I definitely know that. Yeah. Um. And it's weird because I would actually play up my blackness a lot in order to get places. Like, um, because whether you, and this is really weird for me to talk about because I'm only going to be giving a brief uh, explanation of it. But, you know, if, if you're, if you're a black guy and you come in a room you know, and you're asking everybody, hey, man, y'all got the new Outkast CD? And, blah, blah, blah. and people are like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. That's the black guy talking about music, and he's all hype and loud. That's what we expect. Yep. Let's go with it. So I would do that knowing that it got me attention and some extra energy and, and people were flowing with it. But then, you know, obviously on the other side of that, you know, you knew if they're if they're so – accepting and um like oh yeah there there he is again i totally accept that if there's that side of it then there's probably the other side of it where oh yeah that person can't do x y and z or that person is not the best for this and that oh he's a little too loud and obnoxious yes nobody who knew me before rockstar um i think jeff may have known me before i kind of started um I don't want to say playing the role because that's really not what I was doing. At least I didn't think so. Um, but before Jeff at 3DO, when I first got there, I was much more along the lines of stereotypical programmer. 
you know, I wore um, I wore a lot of khakis, white shoes, um, you know, collared shirts or whatever. I was I was still cool with it. Don't you know? Don't get the wrong look, but yeah, 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 yeah. you know, um, <laughs> had my Tommy Hilfiger hats and polo shirts and whatnot. I was cool, Pre- little preppy Florida kind of vibe. But um, it was definitely more not reserved. God, I can't think of the right word for it. But I was definitely careful with my image and how I started portraying myself because I quickly found out that it was far easier to get an audience with the bigger ups and the power players just by being around the, around them and being and them being comfortable with me. Once I got that, then I could be like, hey, well, we got this programming thing we're trying to do with X, Y, and Z. Uh, we got this blah, blah, blah. Here's a proposal for this and that. Uh, I already showed it to the art director. We're going to go this, that, and this way. And they're like, oh, okay, sure, fine. And that's cool. You know, I, I would never say go against your personality. You know, don't dance for your chicken. You know, I've said that a lot. Um, but, you know, when you walk into a room and you're thinking about, hmm, what should I say to people? Should I say, hey, guys, did you hear that there's a new... Um, a new version of this, you know, Microsoft Windows uh, program that does this and that, and this new version of McAfee or some bullshit, which is on my mind, right? Yeah. Or do I say, hey, that new Outcast CD is out, which is also on my mind. Yeah. So now, you know, you come in and start talking about, um, you know, the problems with the McAfee install, and most people are like, hmm, boring, dry, you know. That's not that. That's not that. Uh, it's not that black talk we want. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So this yeah. this goes yeah. into um, into code switching, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you know, I mean, I was pretty like I made sure people knew me pretty early on. Um, how where I was coming from. It's just the initial the initial presentation, I guess, was a little more yeah. was a little manufactured. Because that initial presentation would fuck me up. So yeah, the racism there, the um, that came up in a couple different ways. Like, yeah. like how is this person who looks like what we expect not performing, but this guy who's over here talking about Outcast is performing, and that just rubs people mentally in incorrect ways. I mean, in yeah. in a. Uh, it just there's a mental friction there, you know. When you've got two competing ideas, um, it's not congruent. That's what I meant to look for. That's the word I was thinking. Yeah, of. it's like I'm just trying to go to work. I'm not trying to have my worldview challenged every day. Yeah, you know, and um, yeah, it, it was it was definitely a thing, man. Um, and I'm still I'm still kind of dealing with that. I mean, I I, I suppose I always will. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. So now it's like, how do I set up situations where people aren't like, I am not the, you know, guy who's going to be at a protest yelling at them. Hey man, accept me for who I am and da da da. da. I'm going to force you to, you know, sit down and read these books on, uh, you know, by Alex Haley or whoever, you know, I mean, we can get into those discussions, but I know it annoys me when someone says, "Hey, you should read this book," and da, da da da, instead of talking to me like a person. Yeah. So that has never been my strategy. Um, yeah. I've uh, I've lost friends because of it, where someone's saying some mm-hmm. some dumb shit, and suddenly they'll turn to me and elbow me and like, "Yeah, man, you're down with this bullshit, right?" And I'm like, uh, "No, not exactly. I think that's disgusting, and I think um, you're clearly uneducated on the." The problems that are, arise from da 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 da, like what? Yeah. And, you know, they, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there's like the racist frown where the the eyebrows get furrowed. You know, they kind of like huh? And there's this <laughs> like oh, yeah. you're not supposed to be like pro black. I thought you were just oh man, you know. And it just kind of sours their experience yeah. of you. Yeah. So yeah, I, I've, I've definitely experienced that. Um, but one thing I really don't spend a lot of time doing is trying to figure out what someone's broken ideas about me are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, if you don't mind me jumping in really quick. Go do it. 
when I brought that up, that is not to say, like, oh, I'm thinking about this shit all the time. No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it only, like, in the case of, you know, the story that I told about my girlfriend and her job, I'm like, I, it only, these things only come up when nothing else makes sense. It's like, oh, oh, got it. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. when, when you've exhausted everything else, and especially if the work is not suffering, then nothing should be the issue. If the work is suffering, that's just on me as a person. But, like, it is, that is the last box that I pick. And it's only, it's like break glass when well, you must use it. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. Well, you yeah, I mean? well, you've got a context. And, um, you know, like you were saying, like you were saying, um, we were talking about earlier how everything is just coming together and rolling in some direction. Yeah. You know, it's it's not in the realm of our understand, understanding to be able to parse through what's how much of this is because of X factor, Y factor, the Z factor, whatever. You know, you've got so many things going on. But my problem comes into play when people start to try to ignore factors. Like, yes. oh, that clearly is not the case. I'm like, no, no, back up, leave it on the table. Um, that's, uh, that's, she's a woman in games. There's a completely different context. Dude, it should yep. all be about fairness and equality and everyone's the same. I'm like, dude, there's a freaking different context yes. that's completely alien to you. Um, yes. In fact, uh, I don't know if you remember for a time when I was at Rockstar, um, there were three women sitting around me, and that was just like rare as hell, you know. So it was, um, yeah. it was Alicia, Melissa, mm-hmm. and Brenda from I think her name was Brenda from uh, Rockstar North, mm-hmm. and we were all in the same little cubicle pen, bullpen, and it was just a really interesting situation. Surely, by coincidence, surely. And you know, Jeff was <laughs> Jeff was like the next guy over. Oh, okay. So they they put all the no, I'm joking. I'm not. I'm not joking. No, we're not uh, joking here. Um, <laughs> yeah, and don't forget, um, one of my cube mates was a was a, the pillar, right? I was the guy who got the pillar. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's see. I'm trying to think of who got the pillar. There was like a uh, there was um the printer. The printer got 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 next to the pillar. I was next to a pillar, and I think one of the artists they didn't like was next to a pillar because there were three major pillars in the building. Mm-hmm. And no, no one liked to sit next to him anyway. Um, but no, it was very weird because somebody would walk by and say something, and out of the corner of my eye, I'd see, I'd see these three, these three ladies over here just kind of like look over at each other and like, what the fuck was that? And like start IMing each other. And I'm thinking that I, I missed something. I miss, I totally missed something because I'm a dude and I've been in games. And, you know, so I started to have like a different sensitivity to it. And I started like, you know, listening and talking more. And it's just like, yeah, we're not trying to say that. Well, I wasn't trying to say that stuff is, you know, always an ism or whatever, or somebody's. Yeah. uh, And let me stop and take a second. When I say a racism, I don't mean the, you know, like you've got a white hood and. You know, you're yes. by, you're burning crosses on someone's lawn, yeah, yeah, yeah. or you know, you're a a sexist dude, you know, who smokes cigars and uh, steps out in a wife beater, and you know, yeah. <laughs> and literally, you know, does the shirt's name. Um, but yeah, 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 you know, that's those kind of isms are that I think that that's a scapegoat for a lot of people, and yes. I'm just saying, no, no, no. There are contexts that are have been set up over time that benefit some people more than other people. And yeah. we need to recognize those contexts. But yeah. it gets really tricky, man. And it, what's funny as hell is I've actually done my best to never say, like, any of the code words, the keywords... Like um, black, racism, um, urban, you know, I will dance around words, but make them so uncomfortable at the same time 
because they didn't hear the keyword, so they can't get mad at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? <laughs> so, I actually had an incident. Um, I don't know if you remember the, uh, the, Obama, um, the Obama inauguration party I held. Vaguely. Yeah, that was at that at that uh, bar. I don't know if did you make it. I don't know. I don't remember you in any of the pictures. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I had a Obama inauguration party, right? Uh-huh. And uh, suddenly, because people from work went and everything, a lot of the politics uh, started to bleed into into work. Uh-huh. And and I don't mean like we were talking about it actively at work, but. It's just like somebody would come by, hey man, I, uh, that was really cool last night, I uh, appreciate it. So um, so they're still taking campaign donations? Yeah man, still taking campaign donations. And they'd go about their business. And then somebody else is like, campaign donations? For what? It's like, oh, we did an Obama thing last night and da 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 da. And you know, it just, the subject just came up. Yeah. yeah. So a dude kept confronting me, and this was another one of those going to war b- deals, right? <laughs> This is a different, like a different uh, guy. You might, you might. Here's a handful. Yeah. yeah, but no, um, I was I was actually asked at one point, just point blank, because I was doing the whole dance around thing because I want them to bring it up, not me, because uh-huh. if I don't bring it up, I'm not racist, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like laughing to my, you know, to myself. Um, I'm like, uh, so you know. What, what, what do you mean? What, do you want to ask me something? What are you getting at? With all these little comments you keep saying as you come by. Um, and, yeah, I, let me pause for a second. Because this is the second guy that I'm bringing up that always drops these little comments and keeps going. That's actually a, that's actually a tactic where people are fishing for information. They're kind of testing you to see what you'll do. Um, they're getting themselves more comfortable to confront you later. They're gathering data and information, etc. So, around this time, I just started becoming very cognizant of people um, with their little comments, right? Uh-huh. So this this guy number two comes by. He's asking uh, he's asking some comments, and he's about to leave it alone. And then he goes and goes. He says, "Hey, did you vote for Obama because he's black?" And I turned away from my uh-huh. key. I turned away from my keyboard and looked straight at him and like folded my hands, you know, in my lap, and I said, yes. Uh-huh. I just looked at him and said, yes, I did. Uh-huh. And Internally, he was like, I do it. Obviously, <laughs> to, me, to me, that's clearly not the only reason. Um, yeah. And I could go into a litany of, of things about that whole campaign, but I but just... The person that's asking you that question doesn't deserve that litany of reasons. Exactly. For him, I, for him, I just decided to go ahead and say, yes, I did. Um, and he was like, I, you, you can't do that. And from that moment on, our relationship fundamentally changed. It was just way different. And um, that's happened numerous times where people, people are trying to fish out of me, you know, like, Hey, well, you seem like a nice guy, but where do you stand on this? And um, I, you know, my it's funny. My mom actually warned me about this. She's uh-huh. like, she's like, yeah, man, people use your business against you, so make sure that you know, just just be careful because they'll use your business against you. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah, man. Without ever actually saying anything, um, I brought a lot of uh, you know white discomfort into people's lives. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Uh, that service to your country, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, gosh, it, and it bothers me so much because there, it seems to be that there's this crazy, um, I don't like the, the way the two sides are set up because I think they're out of balance and they don't have a good yin yang flow. Um, where you've just got this crazy, side that says, hey, you don't talk about race at all, and it just goes away, and this and that, and you've got the other crazy side that says, look, man, I don't care if this TV pilot is any good or not, it's got, you know, this, uh, you know, black lesbian, um, 
individual with uh, one foot that was amputated because of their veteran status, and you know, it's yeah. just this, and it's just like, wait, I mean, not to marginalize, you know, black lesbians with one foot, yeah, but yeah. you know, there were I, I was at a, I was at a zine fest, and as progressive as they are, a lot of that. And I'm trying to be careful with my words here because I know I can discuss this with you, but yeah. no, I mean I get I get a lot of I get a lot of misunderstandings when I just say things plainly, and um, so you know I have to be careful when I talk plainly because it gets me in a lot of like like yeah like I just said with the guy I was just like well yes I did you know yeah and then all of a sudden that that'll be I'll be on you know Twitter you know uh, Benja. Binge is canceled, you know, binge is over, whatever. But, um, but yeah, it's like, uh, you know, they're coming at you with these stories, and I'm like, well, what's the story about? And they say, well, first of all, and then they go down this list of why I should care about a certain demographic or oh, a God. certain, or a certain, uh, language, even a certain country, a certain, yeah. and what, man, let me tell you, dude, I walked into, um, you know my uh, my my writing is under the banner of transcendent press so what what makes that what makes that interesting is that i've met a lot of transsexuals that way or transgenders i'm sorry um i've met a lot of you know transgendered people that way just because they'll see my name on like a uh i went to the long beach zine fest and they walk up to my booth and they're like oh you're just a black guy like, huh? <laughs> like, hey, how's it going? They're like, no, 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 cool stories and stuff, you know, just uh, transcendent press. What's that mean? It's like, oh, you know, rising above bullshit, and da, 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 keep going. You know, rise above, man, transcend. I was like, I was like oh, yeah, okay. So, like, yeah, that's why I have the up arrow in that. Uh, okay. But I could see, I, I understand the confusion, and to me, it's kind of funny. Um, yeah. But it's actually open doors because people will, you know, they're more open to talk to me now. Um, and by the way, they actually sat me next to, uh, a, a transgender person and some other, uh, LGBT something. So I'm at this, uh, Long Beach Zine Fest and I'm kind of like, huh, how'd I end up on this side? And I was just, I'm just saying that because I'm literally curious to why they place people where they place people as a designer. Yeah. And there's like another, there's like a crew of black people, you know, two aisles over and a couple chairs down and I'm like, huh, well, I'm fine over here. That doesn't, not a problem, but I'm just like wondering why they decided to place it that way. And I'm looking at the title, eh, transcendent press, sure, whatever. So, yeah, yeah. but that said, that said, I, I see a lot of, and you know, I think, it, I think it's necessary. So don't get me wrong here. I see a lot of, uh, arguing over the identity instead of the core of the gameplay, the story, the whatever you're yes. pushing in your yes. art. Um, yes. I think I think by nature, people with different backgrounds, people with different experiences, etc., will create different stories, and you don't need to force it as much as you think. No, you don't. You just, I, I think you, you could argue that the forcing... And this is where I'll give, and I'm, I'm trying to be careful in saying this because I do not like video game nerds. I think they are some of the worst people. Like, and by nerds, I mean the people that complain about this shit on the internet. Nerds. I think they're some of the worst, most entitled people on the planet. But then you have to look at what are they reacting to. Like, they're reacting to a thing, yes. But look deeper. Sometimes there is something there. And it is a reaction to something being ham fisted. And ham nobody fisted. likes ham fisted. fisted. There you go. That's the word. Nobody likes ham fisted shit. That is just bad. If you just let it be normal, let you know, don't bring it up. Just let it be like you'd let anything else be. I think not only is that the best storytelling, but that is the most positive impact. You change people's minds because it's not this big setup of like, and this is where we have our diversity here, blah, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Just let it be. You know. If and and that little that little clip right there, that sound bite, mm-hmm. I know people will latch on to it and say, 
yeah, we should send him a MAGA hat. And it's like, not what we're getting at at all. No, not what I, no, I will take shit on that MAGA hat. Like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it upside yeah, down, take your shit in and sling it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Send it back. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you know we got right, Jeff watching right now. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, Yo, yeah. Jeff. Yep, yep. Yeah, like, people keep popping <laughs> popping in and out with the lives. Uh, usually they're just clicking to see what's going on, and then they pass by. Nice. Yeah, but um, but yeah, so I'm on this uh, this development kick, and that was one of the things I was just thinking about how you know my context and my putting things out there, and um, the the feelings of uh, you know, what do I have to offer? Mm-hmm. And um, that actually led into uh, Transcendent Press and the whole writing thing. So earlier this year, when the pandemic thing started happening, uh, I started having to close down a bit of my operations on um, on the gallery scene. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, shit, I can't do the gallery scene like I was doing. You're writing up a storm, huh? I got to pivot this over into the story writing or something. Or, you know, that it just happened kind of naturally, though. Um, yeah. and I do, after thinking about it, I was like, you know what? People need to, people would like to read stories. Um, they may think things are interesting about what I have to say. I don't know. So, so coming up on, um, in, on Comic-Con or this air, this time of the year, I'm talking to my writer friends and, and they're like, yeah, man, Comic-Con's coming up. We're talking about hero stories and everything. And being free with uh, the stories and telling things, mm-hmm. suddenly I'm like, you know what? I should just do, I should just channel what I'm thinking about. And that's how this whole Benjicon thing came about. Like, okay. it, it solidified. Um, I got tired of people selling stuff on Instagram and, uh, you know, just trying to, hi, how are you doing? Buy my stuff. You know, yeah. So, and all the sales guys talk about how that's a terrible strategy too. So I'm just hearing all of this, and I'm preparing to put out some, some stuff, and then I think all of these different thoughts came up together. And Sunday, you know, just like two days ago, I said, "Well, shit, let me just start this online storm, this freestyle of thought, just as I think of something, come up with it and do it." Um, I don't want to spend any money on it. The, I think the only, the only money I spent doing this was on, on securing the Benjacon.com website. Okay. You know, and I said, I'll do that. I'll get the, that for 12 bucks a year, you know, just to get, (laughs) just to get the name. And then, um, you know, I'll make everything else, uh, basically a free service or put it out there. Um, I have a I have a stack of old papers here, and I'm just you know with the sharpie, writing on them and taking pictures and posting it to Instagram, and just kind of going along with because that's that's the spirit of creativity, right? I mean, just you feel something and you kind of go with it. So, um, and actually, I will uh, definitely attribute you to part of that just by the nature of you getting in there and like, Hey man, just go ahead and flow with it. Go ahead and do it. You and Marcellus actually pushed me in that direction. Oh. Yeah, totally. Man. I'm glad to have a positive impact. <laughs> hey man, you're uh, you, you do have a definite positive. Oh, I, I tell, I tell people this. Um, if I don't, if I don't mess with you, if, I, if, if you know, you're not getting interactions from me, then I don't, see the need to get interaction from you. It's just that simple. You know, um, and I really don't mean to, and that's my robotic side coming out because I know I'm going to get some family members. You said you don't come. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, but like a lot of family members, I can see them and not, if I don't see them um, years later, they will be the same. It'll be the same interaction. Yeah. You know, um, Some people I'll contact all the time. Some people I won't contact very often. But in general, 
you know, if I'm, and there are some people you just lose contact with, so that's not a thing. But yeah. Yeah. but yeah, I like to actually, you know, stay in contact with people that I think I'm getting something from. And I think everybody does that. Yeah. They ju- they're just not cognizant of it or, you know, they 100%. just, you know, it's like, why didn't you call him? Well, do that. you know, and they try to backtrace their steps and I'm, I'm kind of over here like, yeah, I didn't want to. <laughs> I, yeah. It's something about being, knowing yourself and being very honest that actually pisses more people off. Oh God, yes. Than, than if, than the other way around. Yeah. Which is kind of bizarre, but whatever. Human beings are weird. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, did I? Look, you know, random note here. I'm going to tell you one of the uh, one of the tricks I did during game design. Uh, I don't, I don't know why I decided to tell the story now. Um, I get it got to such a point where I thought people weren't paying attention to what I was saying. Uh, to the point where I would bring something up, and they were like, mm-hmm, "Yeah, whatever." And then they would just go about their business. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I only bring important things up like this. Why Why is it just too many important things that I'm bringing up that, you know, I'm just becoming, do I feel like a, a nuisance or whatever? Mm-hmm. So what I started doing is uh, saying, hey, guys, we need to really get these bugs out of the database. Guys, we need to really get these bugs out of the database. Like, look, these bugs are important. And... I started making QA really important. Like, guys, QA is, they're busting their butts here. They're really, um, you know, on their game. You know, shout-outs to, uh, you know, Ryan Dormanesh, um, Troy Shram, those guys. But what I ended up doing is, after that was set up, I would go back into the QA area. I'd bring up a problem and say, hey, guys, have you seen this bug? And they'd say, oh, my God, I've seen the bugs. Like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, huh? Okay, I don't know if it's in the database. You mind writing that up? And they'd write it up. Like, you know, that's what QA does. And then the people, would, the, the people that you were dealing with would see it? Yeah, so then I'd go back to my desk, and then somebody would yeah. come up and say, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, there's this bug here. Uh, this needs to be fixed right away. And I'm like, mm, yeah, yeah. And it's the bug that I you know, confronted them with before, they said, go away, Mr., you know, my position at the time. Yeah. So I got a lot of that. And, you know, when you were thinking about talking about the isms and the context and all that, I'm like, you know what? This guy with the QA context, for some reason, is getting better, uh, better response than I am at my position. So, yeah. you know, but then you tell somebody that in a meeting, they get, they get all upset, and next thing you know, they're like, you know, you're doing good work, and we like you, but you just don't fit with this uh, next level of whatever we're, bullshit we're yeah. doing. So yeah, man. Yeah. Extremely long answer, yeah, actually, but I'm glad you asked, asked that question. Uh, just one quick thing, you know, and I, I don't bring it up because I think it's, it ties into a lot of stuff, but... Um, you bring me up QA reminded me of when I first, uh, like I think the first maybe couple weeks of Rockstar. And mm-hmm. Bobby Billy, he brought me back QA. And he was just like, he introduced me to everybody. He's like, look, man, everybody out on the floor, ship on these people. But these people make our shit work. QA, baby. And, and just don't be like everybody else. And him taking the time do that was like one of the coolest things because it's just like then you start to like get ingrained into the culture of you know said game it's just like oh everybody out on the floor can kind of shit on QA and it's just like you don't have a fucking game that works because of that like you can't treat people like other or less than like it's just it's such a weird and I didn't get it when he first said it but like yeah it was true. Yeah. And it was cool that he was just like, he kind of just like let me know from the jump, this is the bullshit. Fuck the bullshit. Yeah. No, that's good. Uh, no, um, Millie's a, a cool guy. Cool guy. Have you run into him yeah. lately? Really? Have you run into him lately? 
Oh, no, no, no. Oh, uh, no, I have not. Not like, uh, I don't think I've ever done that. Like, yeah, okay. Case, case in point, that would just be one of the people that I was talking about where I could run into them years later and it's like, yeah, I would still interact with you. I just have nothing to say. Hey, love you, dude. Give him a hug and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Jeff, just, uh, Jeff just said uh, QA is the real, has some of the realest peeps in any development environment. 100%. Yep, yep. Love it. Yeah, man. Um, actually, you know what? Millie was part of that uh, Comic Con scene um, that that we were talking about, mm. and uh, that's the whole. You know, because as I said, I, w- I was channeling all this stuff, right? Um, yeah. And it's just like that creative energy that I, I would get every every year around this time, mm-hmm. just from con season, was. It, it was so overwhelming, I kind of didn't realize I was missing it until, until, oh, and, yeah. and Jeff is here and Jeff is here in the comments. So he actually got me thinking about it um, because earlier he was talking about how, you know, he missed the whole Comic-Con experience and that now they're doing the San Diego Comic-Con at home. Um, yeah. I haven't checked that out too much. So I don't even know really what's going on too much with that, but but yeah, it got me realizing, holy shit, there was a ton, a ton of creative just energy that flowed during the weeks before, during and after that. Mm-hmm. You know? It gets you through. It was like it was like the uh the right caffeine hit that would get you through the rest of the day. Except that this is like the middle of the day, you know, July, yeah. middle of the day, it comes the middle of the year, and this would get you through the rest of the year. Yeah, totally. And now we're just at home. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, people announcing things, just rubbing shoulders with all the, the people in, in the crowds and just like, hey, what are these yeah. guys up to? And the fact that there, the fact that there was so much that it's not just that you couldn't go see everything. You couldn't possibly know everything that was to be seen. Yeah, that yeah. that blew my mind. I was uh, I was talking to uh, on Twitter a little bit about um, our old friend Renato. I don't know if you ever met him. Um, yeah. Yeah. Rest in peace, great dude. Yeah. He yeah. Uh, he introduced me to certain sides of Comic Con that I just didn't know. You know, because we met on the E3 uh-huh. circuit. Um, going to E3, but then we got him down to Comic Con, and he was like, "No, no, I'm going to go talk to this this artist over here. This guy, he wrote this and that story, and the artist and da da da. They got together, and he had this whole backstory as if they were old friends. And <laughs> and I'm just like, what? And then he walks up to the guy and you know waits patiently, and then they start talking. Um, and it was the guy behind the the she character, S H I. Do you remember that comic? Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was a whole big fan. And the guy recognized him, and they had talked before, so they started going into, oh, yeah, I love uh, this old comic, and we love this and that, and that. But early on in the con- my con experience, I started, to, I saw all these other, I didn't see it as human as he did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I saw, yeah. like, hey, there's new exclusive something that's coming out from, from Bathing Ape. I saw a collaboration between Valiant Comics and these T-shirt guys. I saw, um, you know, the hype of a big announcement in Hall H or whatever. And I had this, a lot of my, my love for this stuff was just superficial. Um, yeah. I mean, there were people I knew, of course, but because I was in the industry, I'm just, I was so enamored with how everybody else was developing and what they were doing that... I kind of lost touch with a lot of the human aspect. So uh-huh. when he brought me around, he's like, "Hey, man, let's talk about this guy." Da da da. And it got to the point where, because of him, I was like, I, I started like, "Hey, man, if I'm talking to one of these con guys, let's forget the con for a second and go have lunch." Like that just wasn't on my uh, mind yeah. at the time, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. going to have lunch with a creator, even though I am one, yeah. my, even though I am one myself, right? So, 
So yeah, the uh, you know between talking online with uh, you, Jeff, um, just random people posting about stuff, you know, uh, Andy, um, we were talking about hero stuff, and that's mm-hmm. like we're like we're like oil and water when we talk about Star Wars. So I'm gonna have him on. I'm gonna have him on oh, later okay. and let him know how. Oh, you wh- are. Oh, I cannot wait to hear that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bill Tucci, that was the guy who um, worked on She. Thank you, Jeff. The uh, yeah, but I am um, <laughs> I am so anti the Last Jedi. It's not funny. Like all all Star Wars, all Star Wars is kind of like pizza to me. You know, you can eat it and you're you'll be fine. You're happy. But yeah. but yeah, we we had some back and forths, man. And and I remember we uh, he said. He said, dude, I don't believe you invited that one guy into the group. We got into an argument, and da-da-da, you know, he's a moron. And I'd never seen Andy go off like this, right? And he's just, like, he's just, like, going crazy about this dude. And then I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was like, Andy, what if, what if the first discussion after we had met was about Star Wars? And he's like, oh, yeah. Okay, well, never mind, you know. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, no, he's a good guy, so you know, there's no need to get into all that. Uh, and yeah, that's speaking of gamers and all that. That's like a good little parallel to how people get caught up on some bullshit. You know, I don't want I don't want to lose friends over Star Wars or you know the Cowboys and whatever football team or whatever. But it's it's really weird right now. Yeah. How about how about make Star Wars great again? Okay. Oh God. <laughs> you know what? Let's let's jump back to what we, you said about um about what we were talking about with like diversity and pushing a pushing a message of some sort instead of a story. Um, while it may have always been there, it was definitely not as in your face with a messaging. Um, you know, with the earlier Star Wars, it's funny, I was on like a message board and you've got these crazy right wing guys who are, you know, just saying, oh man, Star Wars, that's how life should be and da 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 da. That was a good story of X, Y, and Z. Then you go to some crazy left wing, you know, progressive uh, soy cheese eating people and, um, you know, they're just crazy saying oh man star wars was a good story of blah 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 human experience and such and such Mm -hmm. and it always amazed me that you could have those two sides um kind of coexisting in something that they shared a like for yeah and now regardless of what you think about it um in terms of it's a yay or nay i would not have let or not let i would not have um, had Kathleen Kennedy roll the way she did in in terms of a lot of that. Yeah. It got very... It got troublesome to me. And I'm thinking, the story of, the story of Star Wars, the lore of Star Wars, what you're building, it's not getting the results you want because of how you're doing it. Not what you're doing, how you're doing it. Yes. So, you know, I, I take that into consideration a lot. In, in fact, you know, table tennis originally did not have um, mixed, uh, like, guys and guys and girls. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, but when, we, when we started coming up with characters and we were just like spitballing onto those uh, onto those sheets that we were sending over to Jason, yourself, and the others, it's like um, that went through a lot of people before it got around to you guys. And when I had, uh, you know, Cassidy, Yumi, um, you know, we were just throwing out ideas for all these other characters, that was actually a big sticking point. That's like, hey, wait a minute. Not that we're not going with it, but... Should we have mixed gender, you know, um, characters here? And that was actually a thing. I had no clue. Right. So when we when we did it, though, 
we kind of just played it as this is a game about table tennis. Let's just go. Um, let's have all these characters with different stats, sizes, etc. Right? Mm-hmm. But um, and this is one of the things I'll say is a genius of Rockstar is just how to present something as yes, this is how it should be in the context and scope of this game and your life. So, yeah. so when people picked it up, they're like, "Oh yeah, this is what table tennis should be." It's like people pick up a Western game, like, or Red Dead. Like, oh yeah, this is kind of what it should be. Yeah. So you know, I've taken that to other places, and you know, they're like, "Well, you got to make sure that you push this and that." Like, ah, once you push it, all of a sudden you're saying something instead of being something. Yes. So. So yeah, that's where a lot of that. Uh, for me, that's where a lot of that comes in, and, and it's it's funny trying to balance that with people because they're almost. Because of Twitter and all that, it's like they're almost expecting that, you know, this side is right or this side is right kind of fighting. Yeah. When I think we're all wrong as fuck and we're just spinning on this rock and don't know what the hell we're doing. You know, to that point, when I thought about this, uh, it kind of blew my mind. And I'm not the first person to think about this, but I guess this is just the point of my life where I'm at. Uh But everybody's just doing the best they can. Now, some of people's the best they can is really bad, but like just doing what they know how. And okay, that's that's that's, that's that's a much better way of why? putting that's a much better way of putting it yeah, instead yeah, of yeah, yeah. best that they, they can. Yeah, they they're doing what they know how. Yeah. They did not the best they can. There's, there's always room to improve, but like no, they're doing what they know how, and that's just like, geez, man, like that is that is uh liberating but also just sad but it's also just like yeah it's where we're at it's just people yeah uh, um, the the humility the ego the um you know I think a lot of it really holds us back and yeah. what's a shame is that I don't know how to present a an alternative that says you can let you should let go of that because it's going to be beneficial to you because what hap- because what happens is you say hey you shouldn't worry about what people think about you but everything is kind of what people think about you mm-hmm. you know like we were talking about the context um you know if somebody doesn't think that you know how to drive they're not going to let you borrow their car it's like you can tell them, no, 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 I used to uh, I, I used to be a race car driver and did this and that and that. And they're kind of thinking, hmm, yeah, but uh, I had a neighbor who looked a lot like you and he couldn't drive, so you're not driving my car. Yeah. And it's like now yeah. now you have to get into this bullshit where you're proving to somebody that, no, 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 I need you to, to think good of me because you thinking bad of me is adversely affecting my life. So yeah. it's really difficult for me to tell people, like, hey, don't worry about what they think because shit. That's a very important thing. Also, yeah. Um, Darian's in the room now. Hey, Darian. Yep, yep. So it's a it's it's a weird thing, man. Um, yeah. And I'm not sure where we're going, but this pandemic, what could it do for us in that respect? I I don't know how to answer that truthfully. And I only say that because what could it do for us if we weren't dumb Americans? Probably a lot. But America just seems to be particularly dumb with this thing. So I think what it's going to do for Americans is potentially either drive them... I think it's going to either drive them to their corner or open them up, one or the other. I think both both are happening. Uh, I, I say, you know, like, you don't have, I don't think you have the George Floyd protest with, and which is becoming a larger conversation about policing in general and authority. I don't think you have that if everybody's living their life. Right. But you also don't have, like, people really 
not wanting to wear masks is like, well, hey, I mean, everything was normal through that, obviously, but like, either expand your mind or drive to your corner. And I think like people not wanting to wear masks are just like that's people being driven to the corner. But I think what it could do for creatives is uh, a whole lot because you have to create your way out of this pandemic. Yeah. You have to. Like, and I think to when he, earlier you brought up people like, oh, I can't direct or I can't write or whatever. That made me angry. And I'm like, no, this is your time. This is right now is your time. Like, yeah. go out make something, do something. Like, not only is it good and healthy for you, but, like, it's, it will put you in a better position once things become normal. Like, my goal for the year, uh-huh. and then kind of specific, more specifically for the pandemic, was, like, okay, I want to be more known as an artist by the time this shit is all over. Right. And, I mean, I, granted, I've slowed down a little bit because I've just been very busy with client work, but, like, you know, but it's client work that will be seen at some point. It's really, really cool. But like, uh, you know, it, it's just, you have no excuse. Yeah. So like there, it, it's, it's dangerous outside. Stay inside and make something. Like, you know, yeah. 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 Like, uh, so how do you, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you tell people that? I mean, you know, um, with, with the situation where, I mean, a lot, of, I think a lot of the younger people get it. I mean, yeah. who are, who grew up on Instagram. You know, they, yeah. they get that kind of thing. They get, well, hey, you know, you just create. If you're on TikTok, you kind of get, hey, just start creating stuff. Um, yeah. I shouldn't say, you know, all young people, but the majority of young people, because a lot of, there are just a lot of people who are really scared to create and put something out there. And so how do you, how do you broach that with them or encourage that? Uh, you, it practice, like, I feel like you have to tell them, you're not going to be comfortable doing it. it it's, and, that's the end of, and that's the end of the discussion for a lot of people right there because they have this idea that if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Creating doesn't feel good because people are going to see my broken shit. Then I, then I want to stop. Well, then that makes it very easy because if that's the end of the conversation for them, that's the end of the conversation for me. It's like, oh, well, you never truly had the fire. Bye. Mm. You know, like, you... you it's... There, there, there's that old story of like the little kid running up to the master saying, I want to be as good as you one day. And please teach me. And I'm sure I'm butchering this. He's been told several different times or several different ways, but please teach me. No. 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 Kept on rejecting the kid. Finally, the kid asked one day and the master's like, yes, come with me. And they go, they go into like this pool of water. And the kid is like, what, what are we doing here? Am I just looking at this? And the master takes the scruff of the kid's hair, dunks it on the water, holds it down for a little bit, brings him back up. What do you want? Uh, what? Dunks his head back in the water. What do you want? Uh, one more time, goes back into the water, pulls his head up. What do you want? Air! right there, you must want to be as good as I am with that intensity. And that was the lesson. Now, it's, it's, maybe it's not always that, but like, you have to want it. Yeah. What, like, wanting it and like, whatever that thing is, you, I mean, you can't fucking ask them. You just can't. I mean, you can and be mediocre, but there's a shelf life for that. I mean, I watched artists pass them when transition from Maya to ZBrush was happening. And guess who's not working? Mm, yeah. You know? Like, I, you know, they, maybe they weren't happy doing it to begin with. That, that's a whole other conversation. But, like, I saw a lot of people, like, who are my age now in the industry who were just, like, struggling. And, like, I haven't found work, I can't get blah, 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 yada, 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 yada. And I'm like, I can't be that. Yeah. Like, no, no. And, you know, you know what, uh, that, that's that's very correct. And um, 
well, what I'll say to that is when I found that so for whatever reason, people's energy has gone away from something or they don't want to go to that, you know, they don't want to go from Maya to ZBrush or, you know, they don't want to go from, you know, well, hey, I had this great blog, but now people are using Instagram and that's visual with pictures. I don't know what to do now. Or, you yeah. know, I used to um, have all these, uh, I used to, you know, help kids play soccer or whatever, but now they all want to play basketball and, you know, you whatever. And yeah. they don't want to make that, they don't want to make a transition that seems normal. Um, I've always tried to find out where that energy went, you know, because it came from somewhere and it's not like it went yeah. away. It just, either you let it, let it die and it was, you were just getting dragged along by previous momentum, Yeah. you know, um, like some 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 people who are in the game industry, I know they got in the game industry or they got in whatever industry they they wanted to because they just wanted a good job, or they yeah. just wanted to move to move out of their small town, or yeah. you know just a litany of other reasons, or they wanted to be the star at their their high school or their college or whatever. But it was something that wasn't exactly what they were doing, and then they have a hard time figuring it out. Yes. You know, so... I mean, look, I was there. Mm -hmm. That was me after, after Rockstar. I mean, it wasn't just like, like, like I told you earlier, it was, it was, uh, it was for me, I cannot go back home. Hmm. Yeah. Like, that was it. And I had to redefine what that meant for me was Rockstar, yeah. which is when I think I went crazy. So, um, yeah, no, that's, I, I identify and sympathize. Like, that, that's real shit. No, you know what? And I was reading a book um, by a guy named Grant Cardone. Uh, he's kind of crazy, a Scientologist, but he has good points on, <laughs> on business and everything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he was like, yeah, Steve Jobs wasn't trying to make iPads for people. He was trying to make a dent in the universe. And when you started thinking about energy and just moving, I was like, you know what? I could just imagine him really not giving a damn about an iPad as a thing, but just like, you know what? We can have people access information and da 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 at our fingertips. You know what? We can play all this music and be in touch with whatever all the time. Where he, he's on a, his energy was on those kinds of levels. And that's what made it easy. That's what made it easy for the products to change because it wasn't about the product itself. But then, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, um, because there are people who are definitely only about the product, and it's like, I, I told you I uh, interned with 3M, right? Yes. Okay, the amount of fascination with adhesive is stupid over there. Okay. It's, it's, it's comical, but it's so respectable, because, you know, they've got stuff like, well, if we put up a big uh, window sticker, you know, can we have it like timed to the to the day where in two weeks, you know, it'll start peeling off by itself and you'll just be able to walk up and, you know, like peel it off by hand because it's time for it to come down after two weeks anyway. But before those two weeks, the adhesive is like like wallpaper. It's just not moving. And the fact that you had these guys like sitting around at lunch, you know, hey, man, you know that uh, adhesive bond 17-B, man, oh, man, that's just running the game now. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about, adhesive? You know, and they're like, you know, you put uh, certain adhesives under hot water and suddenly there's no little sticky gunk on it. This is the stuff they're working on, right? Uh -huh. And this is why posters make so much money because they just do it right and nobody can keep up with them. So I don't, I don't knock the vibe of, you know, just getting in one lane like that. But just in terms of energy, um, you know, having to ask yourself, where is your energy going? Where is it going next? Um, where did it come from? You know, I think once you start getting into that level, then you're really starting to tap into, um, literally and figuratively, you know, 
true power. Yes. Um, so and this has been a, and, and you know, I, I've talked about this with my hair growing out, you know, my shit was a little patchy and I couldn't do it um, until I chilled the fuck out. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just like, shit, locks, baby. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. I mean, maybe I just need to chill out. Maybe those patches will grow back. To be clear, to be clear, those were those were facial patches. To be clear. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, you remember that barber we went to, right? Uh, uh, I remember. He, he's the one that delivered the best day he gave to me. Yeah. Hey, bro. Got a little patch back here. <laughs> 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 That's not uncommon. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to, at least for me, uh, flow as best as I can with my energy. And uh, that tends to weird people out, but hopefully I'm getting my bedside manner together where I can just, like, roll with people and not have them get all pissy and, uh, you know, keep me away from things. Because I'm going for it. Yeah. Oh, check this out. We got a... Yeah. Uh, so Jeff wanted to know if we had any if you have anything new coming up in terms of projects along the lines of, like, uh, you did the Notorious Modoc? Um, not personal projects. The, uh, I am currently working for Sideshow Collectibles, though. Oh, um, okay. Leave that there. What kind, um, what kind of release are we talking about, like, soon, or... I, I have no clue. Okay. Um, but that's been a dream come true. I mean, it's, it's it's like every every Comic Con going to see their their uh, their booth was just like heaven. And now I'm working with them, and that's who would have thought? Like I, I mean, I mean, there's so much. There's a lot of cool professional stuff happening for me this year, but it's also just like coinciding with the worst year that everybody's known. So uh, it's, it's, it's just not important, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but, it, yeah, nothing personal art-wise coming out. So um, the, the last thing, okay, the last thing then that you that you put out was the, uh, the what do you call them, the Wu Troopers? I forgot how you typed yeah, it. Wu Troopers. Wu Troopers. All right, tell us how yeah. that came about and uh, or a little bit about that. That's funny, uh, Jason Castagna and I were having a conversation and he mentioned, oh, that'd be a cool idea. And, uh... So wait, a lot of people don't know... I'm, I'm going to link it up, but a lot of people don't know at all what we're talking about. So what did you create? Uh, basically, it was a mashup of Wu-Tang and Stormtroopers. And just the helmets. I mean, I, I just... I wanted something to do a like, quick turnaround. But, um... Yeah, he, he mentioned it. And... It just kind of was brewing in there for about a year, and then I just decided to start making them. And it became an exercise of, like, how do you put personality into a helmet without actually starting to change, like, you know, the helmets? Like, you have the... Like, Stormtroopers, like, the, the variety of levels of Stormtroopers have, like, all these crazy different helmet designs. I didn't want to do that. Right. I wanted to pick big helmet design and actually the helmet design is, is inspired by uh, former I guess they're I'm not sure if they're called 3 anymore they might be called Thunderverse now but Ashley Woods toy company they did a version of Stormtroopers that was like some of the coolest Stormtroopers I've seen and so uh, but I liked their helmet design so I, I basically sculpted that and then just started like interjecting personality and the first one I did was uh, Ghostface Killer which was like easy but then it progressively got harder because you're just like, okay, how can I make this feel like this member of Wu-Tang yeah. without, with maybe just like a do-rag, a hat, a color change. Yeah. Uh, one one person commented and they were like, well, 
maybe you can add decals. And I'm like, no, nah, that's, that's changing the exercise. Like, it, it's, like, if you're able to start adding decals, then it, you can totally, not cheat your way out, but it's just like, if I had to, like, design each one of a different, complete helmet, it yeah. would take much more time. Yeah. And actually, there's something to, like, having a constraint. No, no, the, yeah. the exercise of the constraint is very um, appropriate. I, I totally get that. Yeah. And so it was just, it turned to that, and people loved it. And so I actually know the next series I'm going to do. But uh, I'm okay. hoping to get that out this year. But if I'm continuously as busy as I have been the past, like, month, it'll be rough. But So it, let, me take, let me take a guess here. Um, I'm going to say that... Although although it's a beloved one of the helmets, I'm going to say that Golden Arms was probably the easiest in terms of concept. No, I mean in terms of I knew hey, you'd be gold, right? But no, because then it was just like I think at that point did I do a gold here? I'm actually going to check really quickly. I'm not sure if I'd done something in gold at that point, but, uh, no. I, okay, so I think before uh, you got, I did, um, I made Old Dirty Bastard, who was yellow-ish. Like the, oh, the, sure. the, the, right. The helmet was yellow. Yeah. So then I couldn't just do something in gold. And so then I was like, I think it was with uh, Jizza. You know, I, I looked up uh, Shogun Assassin, and I actually mm-hmm. started pulling, like, getting reference from the movies that right. you know, the albums were inspired by. Mm-hmm. And so by the time I got the Golden Arms, I'm like, okay, I know how I'm going to do this. But then I looked up the movie, The Kid with Golden Arms, and he had, like, this crazy big hair. Yes, and I totally remember that. that made him, yeah, it's just like all the stuff that you know, that you could pull from, like the, the, the rings on, on the uh, forearms, it was just like, well, I can't really incorporate that into the helmet. So then I, I kind of made the do-rags like the hair. Yeah. And then he had this little, like, headband. And that's where I just put the U. And it, so it just became like, that was the hardest one, but that is actually my favorite one. So it was the hardest? Yes. Huh. It wasn't the easiest. But you think it'd be easy. But it sure. was flipping it so that it was still interesting. And uh, yeah, I, su- I suppose if you, I suppose if you just did gold, then it was just like, well, he just did gold. And it doesn't, and it makes it actually feel like he's more special. Sure. And that was the other thing. You, I didn't want to make one feel like it was more special than the other. Mm-hmm. And so, like, just straight up gold, nah. But. Yeah, it's, it's, it's each, that was, man, that was a really fun exercise. I, I, that was maybe the most fun I've had this year. Hmm. No, yeah. It actually talked a lot of presentation, too. Like, you your, know. your vibe, yeah. the vibe uh, that I was getting from your, your comments and the, the replies and everything uh, seemed very fun, and I, I was totally digging it. So, I, I appreciate it. Thanks, man. No, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was truly a lot of fun. Yeah, that's, um, I, I, li- I like projects like that and, um, you know, just going ahead and getting out and flowing with them. I think that's one thing that I've, I've started to embrace a lot more lately is just, first of all, understanding an energy that I have and then flowing with it. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, then, hey, good thing. Keep going. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm I'm much more at peace with just creating now. So, and I'm glad to see you did that. That kind of got me hyped to do some things too. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Any, anything that's out yet, or? Um, no. But when you released that series and you were talking about um, a constraint, um, you know, I definitely was in the mode of. Uh, at the time, I was I was reformatting my my presentation, my look, in um, mm-hmm. on Instagram. And I went through and scrubbed every picture that was like a uh, digital creation. You know, like even if I said, even if I just wanted to type, I think the only thing I have left on there that's not like a photograph 
is mm-hmm. is basically uh, that time when I, I made a message about doing the blackout screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I made a little comment about that. But, like, before, I would have a whole lot of, you know, straight from my computer generated kind of things, and I just slap them in there. And that's fine um, to do, but I was just trying to constrain myself with, you know what? A lot of people don't think they know me. Let me get on here and start doing an IG Live. Um, You know what? Let me just not worry about the lighting. Let me just start putting stuff out there. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, flowing with that energy, it was like, oh, how are you doing? I I haven't seen your face in ages. And I'm like, eh, I, I really don't care to show my face out there. But it's part of an energy flow that exists on Instagram. So I do it. You know, so, so yeah, just, uh, just, just understanding other people's energy flow, comparing, contrasting and making sure my energy is flowing. I don't, I don't know if you remember you came over, uh, last time you and Jeff came by, Mm -hmm. um, I had the whole thing about energy on my board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I am, this is a, a a multi-year study of energy just in general. Um, you know, it's not in a, not in a woo woo type of sense, although I have researched those woo woo energies, <laughs> but, um, just comparing and contrasting how different people are getting up, getting along, you know, what keeps them going? What's what, where, where does good energy go? Where does bad energy go? Um, I've gotten, and I'm not afraid to say it here. I've got ex- gotten extremely good at dealing with my bad energy. Um, you know, just flowing, basically. And yeah. now, um, you know, with this pandemic, it's an it's an obvious test. So I'm like, how well can I keep flowing with this? Can I be disciplined to where the energy doesn't, like, short-circuit itself? Or, you know, I don't blow a fuse somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's got me, like, the regimen side of me is still like, okay, well, if I have this energy it's best corralled at this time of day. Like you'll pretty much only see me on social media from uh, a little bit around 10 o'clock in the morning. Then I really jump in around two o'clock in the afternoon to uh, seven o'clock ish, which is dinner time and the time when most people are on. But then after that, I kind of shut it off. I don't set any, that is probably very healthy. I don't set any hard limits. Um, yeah. on, on just about anything, but yeah. in general, it's like, okay, uh, after this time of day, um, you know, just close down all the extra tabs you don't need, close down the Facebook tab, close down Instagram or whatever. If you have to go on, you know, yeah, go on. You know, don't, I don't stress myself over like I can't do something or I shouldn't do something, mm-hmm. but, um, but it's just kind of a flow thing. You know, I time it all out where it's like, huh. On this day, I had a really good, I had a really good energy flow going on. Um, you know, I talked to people; I was having fun. Uh, on this day, I didn't. Um, well, shit! What what happened this day? Oh uh, yeah, I ate all that bullshit the night before. Okay, so let me see. If I'm going to be doing this the next day, just don't eat bullshit the night before, because I, you know, I still want to eat bullshit sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're still here. Yeah, you deserve it. Yeah, you know, uh, but it's it's just, God, it's it's so weird to get to a place where you're flowing how you want, but you're not constrained by, um, or really better put it this way, how the regimen, how the scheduling, how the organization is actually freeing me up to flow however the hell I want to, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. It does. I, I forgot who said it, but they were like, when you have a crazy amount of discipline, you have a crazy amount of freedom. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where I'm getting to right now. That's a good place, especially now. Uh, yeah, you know, I uh, I no longer set my alarm clock. I just kind of wake up around the right time, and I'm like, this, mm-hmm. feel, this feels right. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, it's it's like that now, so. But yeah, but yeah, man. Um, 
you know, I was telling people I was going to do a podcast and they were like, is it going to be 10 minutes or um, 15 minutes or whatever? And I was like, nah, man, I'm, um, I'm taking this back to where where me, Rav, Jeff, Marcellus, Josh, all of us started um, getting back to that vibe and pushing out some good content that way. Um, and just really getting into stuff. Um, definitely definitely still taking cues from all the, the, the hitters, you know, Joe Rogan, yes. um, Howard Stern to some extent, and a bunch of others. But, um, but yeah, man, I'm glad to have you on here first for the Benjicon series. <laughs> it was a pleasure to be on here, man. This is, this is, uh, I missed this. I really did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, um, I'll have the audio out much sooner than I have out the video. Okay. Um, but I'll try to get this down and into the flow process quickly. And that's another reason why I'm doing it every day. I just need to bang out the process of putting these out. So, um, I don't know if you've seen the schedule, but, uh, me, I mean, I'm going to do a solo one. Um, just seeing how long I can rant for basically, uh, Jeff is going to be on last. So you're starting up and then Jeff is kind of closing out the guest list. Um, Andy's going to be on. We're going to talk about uh, Star Wars and theater business. Uh, okay. A writer, Holly, she's going to be on later. Um, David Rurano, I told you, the uh, producer, film guy. Mm-hmm. And I might have uh, Patrick Hickey Jr. on again. He's um, He's a writer from New York. He writes the, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, The Minds Behind the Games books. I might have seen it. I'm not. I'm not sure. Okay. I'll, uh, I mean, I'm going to link all that up later anyway. Um, okay. And I think I'm missing someone. Uh, well, it'll be a surprise then. But, but yeah, man. Uh, new territories, new, new, new ways of doing things, uh, 2020 part two. Um, I definitely wish you the best. You're one of the more powerful and, uh, and positive spirits I know of. So, you know, I want to make sure you uh, look, man, I'm just trying, man. I, cause it, 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 there's too much to be sad about. If I start going down that rabbit hole, it's a rat for the year. <laughs> I, I just can't, I, I can't, <laughs> Yeah, well, here, man. well, you know, I, I don't want you to be uh, self-conscious about how you come across or anything, um, I, because I, I just want you to know that you have a very unique signature energy. Um, I do, too, so, you know, <laughs> but I want you to know that you do and keep putting it out there. And if it doesn't feel right, keep going, fix it, whatever. But don't hold yourself back. Love your energy, dude. I, I, I like where you're growing to. It, it, it's, uh, you are, it's like, you're getting to the, uh, uh, who is the person that used to run Jeff Cam with, not Jeff Cam, but with working with Russell Simmons that is now like. Uh, Rick Rubin? You are like getting to that Rick Rubin place. <laughs> and that's where I'm trying to be. Oh, hell I don't yeah. I know if I have that in me. But that. It's like you, you have like this Rick Rubin energy now. And I like, especially like the last time he linked up and chatted, I'm like, oh, yes. I understand now. So, <laughs> yeah. Excellent. All right, um, real quick, is there any uh, thing pe- people should be looking out for? Um, they, I'm going to link them up with, you know, your art station and your Instagram and all that. Um, uh, so that's Jehutisan, J E H U T Y S A N. On Instagram. Uh, that's it, really. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I do have one question. That, and it's, can I access this if I'm not on Facebook? Yeah, that's it. Like, uh, like I'm going to have, I'm gonna have like, a podcast audio. Um, there's already an RSS feed, so you can get it on your podcast reader. Um, okay. So I'll, I'll have the audio up relatively soon. And then on YouTube as well, I'll put it out there. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, so you'll be able to hear everybody else talking shit. Excellent. Cool. Cool. Well, I look forward to it. All right, man. Um, 
you know, I got more Benjicon stuff to get to. Uh, I got to figure out something to do for Artist Alley and all this other nonsense that I'm just spewing out on the internet. So, uh, so if that's uh, that's it, man. I appreciate it and thank you. No, no problem. Thank you. All right then. Peace. Later. All right. That was a uh, Raphael Phillips. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. As I said, we're going to be getting into some other uh, podcast guest here during this week uh just try to bang these out really quickly kind of flow with them let me know what you think let me know what you're looking for and i'll catch you later